Are you okay, Casey? Yeah. <laughs> Did you get broken up? Yeah. Do you think it would be disruptive if during this Q and A I flew my drone? No. It's not a it's not a I didn't think so. Man. Hey. <laughs> So, uh, let's hope that, that all of that hospital trip yesterday was enough. Yeah, yeah, that was great. That but was, hey, yeah, let's just let's just get this started, and I'm gonna do my thing right here. Just fire away, man. I'm I'm ready. Welcome to Finland, man. It's great to be here. So, uh, has it been good? Yeah, I mean, yesterday these assholes strapped me to the roof of a go-kart and drove me around downtown Helsinki. Besides that, it's been a great trip. Hey! You guys want to be in the vlog? Yeah! <laughs> now cheer, everybody. Yeah! <laughs> We're starting off in a good place. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for everything you do. You just motivate everyone you motivate me and uh so my question was um uh, you you inspire a lot of people a huge amount of people around the world but who inspires you is there anyone who mot motivates you sure um you know as far as creative motivations there's a number of filmmakers or creators um that i look to that i think are really powerful there's, I also draw from weird places, like one of my favorite books in the whole world, I've literally read it four times and it's like 800 pages, is a textbook on World War II. It's just a book that you read in university, a college textbook on World War II. Because there was something about the tenacity and perseverance of the generals in World War II that I find tremendously motivating. Like they couldn't stop because they had no choice. And it was literally do or die. And there's something about that that just struck me. Um, and you know, and I look to civil rights heroes in, in, the, in the United States of America as people who similarly operated with sort of uh, uh, out of sheer necessity. They realized their dreams and aspirations out of sheer necessity. And I, I draw a lot from, from those types. When it comes to filmmakers, you know, I, I look to People like Spike Jones and Michelle Gondry, I think when I was coming up, they were the heroes of mine because they were making stuff unlike anybody else out there. And there was something about, something tangible about their films that, that felt like I could do that too. Um, Werner Herzog, German filmmaker, I think his films are great, but I think his ethos and what he represents is far more motivating for me than anything he's ever actually made. The ideas that he represents and the fact that he thinks knowing how to forge a forge a uh, permit, a forge a fake film permit is more important than knowing how to use a camera is, is perfectly aligns with what it is that I love about filmmaking. So I, I would say it's all over the place, but there isn't one sort of creator that I would point to to say I want to be like that person, I want to be like her. It's, for me, it's, it's more of a, a, an aggregate of, of different ideas that I just love and, and try to latch myself onto regarding YouTube, and if, what have you learned from them? Mistakes on YouTube. I mean, there are certainly some videos that I've posted that I look back at and I wish I hadn't posted. And sometimes they're vlogs and sometimes they're, they're different kinds of videos, but there's always, they always have one thing in common, which is I rushed. I didn't stop and really think, is this what I want to put out? And I would say, you know, you're asking about the vlog and, and creating daily before, and I would say that that is one of the one of the negatives of the vlog, and one of the things that in season three I'm really working hard to avoid is you become sort of a slave to clicking that upload button. The daily, it has to be every day at the same time. And I realized there were a number of times when I would sort of sacrifice or, or, or compromise the integrity or the way in which I would create so I could get it posted in time. And I look back and I see some subpar work that I, I wish I had given more focus to. So. My question is, uh, you seem very confident in what you're doing and what you think is the right or a good thing. And I was wondering if you ever question if there's any value in what you do or like how do you value or you know that there's value in like your vlogs or something. Um, yeah, I mean, look, it's always been the same for me. I, when I first started making videos when I was a teenager, 
um, there was no YouTube, there was no way to upload videos, there wasn't fast enough bandwidth to actually upload the data that was in a video. The way I'd show people videos, I'd plug my camcorder into a TV, you remember these days, DV cams, I'd plug the camcorder into a TV, just like the way you did it, and I would click play and show it to three people at a time. Um, and what's not changed since then and now is that back then I made things that I thought were good, and now I make things that I think are good. And it makes it really easy to sort of ignore the thumbs down on YouTube or the fuckheads in the comments. It makes it really easy to uh, ignore the noise if the reason why you're making it is for yourself. And if the reason why you're making it is so people will like you and so you can be popular and famous and cool and make money, um, then you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. And, and it's typically, I, I think that that's the delineation. And if you're, if you're doing it for the right reasons, then the noise around it, the negativity around it, any kind of discouragement just sort of rolls off of you because that's, that's not why you set out to, to, to create. Mistakes on YouTube. I mean, there are certainly some videos that I've posted that I look back at and I wish I hadn't posted. And sometimes they're vlogs and sometimes they're, they're different kinds of videos, but there's always, they always have one thing in common, which is I rushed. I didn't stop and really think, is this what I want to put out? And I would say, you know, you're asking about the vlog and, and creating daily before, and I would say that that is one of the, one of the negatives of the vlog. And one of the things that in season three I'm really working hard to avoid is you become sort of a slave to clicking that upload button. The daily, it has to be every day at the same time. And I realized there were a number of times when I would sort of sacrifice or, or, or compromise the integrity or the way in which I would create so I could get it posted in time. Okay. And I guess, yeah. Hi, um, can you say something in Finnish? What do, what do I say? Don't make it a profanity. There are young children in this room. What does that mean? You can say it to me. I love you. I love you. Oh. <laughs> Only very. I wanted to whisper I love you into my ear. <laughs> Okay, yeah, give me something. Come on, give me something for real. That's, uh, that's a hockey team. I feel like I'm just being fucked with right now. Why don't we ask uh, another question? There you go, sir. Hi, Casey, my name is Diana. Hi, Diana. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, what do you not like in the content right now and what do you wish you could see more? Sure. Well, I, I think that there's kind of an interesting thing happening specifically on, on YouTube right now, which is um, when you can monetize, whenever money's involved, things get weird. And on YouTube, how it works is the more views and more engagement you get, the more you get paid. And I think what that's done is it's been kind of a race to the bottom where it's content purely made for eyeballs. Um, purely made to chase those pennies and cents down um, instead of for the quality or integrity of the content. And I think that's kind of a dangerous thing. And the thing about it that I really don't like is I don't know how to correct that. I don't know what motivates that to correct itself. Uh, and I, I don't know really too many other places where that exists. I think musicians make music because they love it. And they make music and, and sometimes it's a big hit and Taylor Swift song pumps everywhere and she makes a whole bunch of money because of it but and when I think of a lot of feature films and I think of even television I think that there's no s formula that will equal high ratings but I think on, on YouTube it's slightly more hackable I think it's sort of easy to look at lowest common denominator content that gets a lot of views and emulate that and then that can become um, that can sort of set a trend of negativity and it can bring the whole steer the whole creative culture in a bad direction so I think these are growing pains. You know, YouTube is the first platform where you can get paid to, to have your videos and content be viewed. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that. And I think in, in the next five to ten years, we're really going to see kind of a renaissance of, of filmmaking and creativity because of these outlets. Um, I remember when I started vlogging, I only know, knew of two daily vloggers, and they were both seen as kind of crazy individuals, Fun for Louie and, and Ben Brown. 
And they were great guys, they were friends of mine, and I, I loved what they did, but they were really outliers in YouTube. Um, pranks were the trend then, two years ago. And I started vlogging, and I noticed other people were starting vlogging, and, and I noticed it was this trend that I was a part of. And I remember my, my very smart friend in the social space, Jerome Jar, said to me, he was like, vlogging is going to be the next big thing. And now it is, and everybody's doing it. But I think people are going to get sick of it just as quickly as they got excited by it. Um, and I think that's going to happen soon. So I think that the future is going to be something that doesn't look or feel like vlogs are today. Uh, do you guys know David Dobrik? I think I talked about him yesterday. Do you guys watch him at all here? Some guys do. I watch his vlogs, and they're unlike anything else on YouTube. And I think that that is the trend that we're going to see, is we're going to see some smart innovators doing something that doesn't look or feel like anything else, and maybe they'll call it vlogging, and the entire um, genre will start to shift in a new, fresh direction. This is getting pretty stale right now. In general. So uh, my question is, uh, what do you think is the appeal of your like style of filmmaking? Because there's, there really exists like established case in Iceland style of filmmaking. Um, you know, I, I think that when I started creating daily vlogs on YouTube, the only people that had made content like that before were much more about the sharing than they were about the act of creating. I mean, literally at the time, you had Zay Frank a few years earlier, and he was the first person to talk into a webcam with jump cuts. Like sitting at a desk talking to a webcam, a style that we're all so familiar with now, we just sort of assume it's been around forever. That was invented by somebody. And vlogging at the time was, was literally just a point and shoot like this. And it was, there were a few people did it, and they talked into a camera in their hand, and that's all it was. It was nothing more. Um, and when I came in, you know, I had already, I'd had over a decade of filmmaking behind me. I'd made two feature films, I'd made a TV show, I'd made uh, hundreds of YouTube videos. And uh, it was always about the act of creating. So I, I didn't approach daily vlogging as a way to share all the intimacies of my life. So much of the first season was about me kind of explaining the fact that this isn't a diary, but this is an opportunity to create something every day. And I think that merging that, that sort of mandate with um, you know, my creative experience, my experience in the filmmaking space, it just sort of yielded something that felt more like a movie every day instead of a journal entry every day. And I think that was new enough and exciting enough to build a big audience. And I also think that it's, it's simple and accessible enough for, for new, young, um, inspired or motivated creators to, to try to do something more like that than, than do what was done prior. Place for new bloggers on YouTube. Um, I think that there's always a place for for the next generation in, in every format, and especially on YouTube. But I don't think that um, I think the only way to beat sort of the next big thing on YouTube is to do something that's unlike anything else that's out there right now. Um, I have a video that I'm going to make that's in my list of videos to make, and it just literally breaks down in the most detailed way, exactly how I make my videos. And I'm gonna issue a disclaimer there that's like, if you follow these instructions, you'll make a vlog that looks exactly like mine, and it's a guaranteed way to never build an audience or be successful on YouTube. Because to emulate or copy what somebody else is doing or try to be like somebody else on YouTube guarantees you will not succeed. So I, I do think there's plenty of room for new up-and-comers in the space, but it requires redefining a space or creating a new genre. Um, I always describe it as like there are 10,000 or more sheep headed in that direction on YouTube. And if you think you can just sort of jump in there and walk with those 10,000 sheep in the same direction and actually stand out, um, you're mistaken. The only way to, to stand out is to get out of line, turn around, and go in the opposite direction. Um, and that's what's required to succeed on YouTube. <laughs> Thank you for having me.